Hello, welcome back to Interface Electronics Laboratory 4 R to R DAC measurement on a real circuit. Um, today we are measuring the sign signal and doing the FFT. So this is the circuit on the Electronic Explorer with the R to R deck connected to the DIOs and with the output connected to the oscilloscope and the MSB bit to the channel 1. In the previous video we already looked at the oscilloscope of a ramp and we looked already at the t digital pattern generator and we hooked up the digital pattern generator. So today we want to do the same with the sign signal. To have the sign signal um, we have to change now from the binary counter type to a sign signal type. So here we have to use a custom waveform and we want to edit the parameters of this bus. So here we have the custom, we have a push-pull output um, to get 1024 values and um, since we want to uh, generate this one and I don't know how to do the prefill, I will import a file with the values. So I open this prefill, I do the brow browse and normally um, you can load from the website these um, um, sign files which are used for the um, for the interface electronic measurements. So I have to navigate to my directory where I saved all these files. So I have now a 10-bit sign generator with 43 pe periods. I have only 8 but hopefully my the automatically the software will map it to my 7 bits then. Okay, so I see the 9, so it will be mapped like this one, um, so that the not used bits will be not mapped, but only the high order bits. That's exactly like I want to have it. I import 1024 points, so I import this one. I will run it at 1 kilohertz, so by doing this one I have everything in, in here, so I can close it and it runs. So let's look at the d at the output. So for the oscilloscope I have to press run and here I see my sign signal. The important thing is since I have 43 periods I have to see in the oscilloscope the 43 periods. So far I see so for 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So at the moment I'm seeing only 22 to get the 22, uh, so we need double this one, so we have to have the 100 milliseconds. And now I would see the 43. So um, due to the low frequency, you see the sampling is very long, 500 milliseconds, half a second. So I should increase the pattern generator frequency so that I have a better um, resolution. So let's do this. Um, I don't take 10 kilohertz, I will take 10 kilohertz um, for my run frequency. Um, I see it here, I will do the 10 milliseconds accordingly because I have the factor of 10. And now I have a nice picture. So the assumption is that by mapping it like this one that I exactly mm, get 43 periods. So we will see that. So let's do the export. Again we have the time and the C2. Uh, of this one we copy the data to the clipboard. We go back to the um, lab. We go to this page um, where we can process the oscilloscope uh, data. We paste the oscilloscope data in. We have 8000 values. We are still operate with a 16-bit range which is uh, fine for us. We will process all 8000 data lines and let's look at the data at the moment. Okay, so we see, yes, we have a nice picture. Um, we see our zoom data where we have the four points here. We are starting a little bit late, so I think we should start a little bit earlier. Um, 
So averaging DNL start. So I start at one here. So it's nicely centered here now. So perhaps I, sh I should start at two. I take four values. It uh, appears to be that I have four values per um, four values per sample. Um, for the digital pattern generator, I imported 1,024 um, points. So I also want to read out 1,024 points. I now have a um, I have a sign, so I can't do my ramp analysis. You see, if, if I do the INL DNL for this one, of course, um, the transfer curve looks funny because it expects a positive ramp. So what I have to do is, um, I just want to map it to positive integer data. So let's do this one. So now I got the positive integer data here in the range of 65k. Since I'm using only 256, this range is nice. So at the now I have to basically take these values and do a FFT processing. So I select all the val values. Okay, so I have all the values here. I with Control C, I copy it, and then I go to the FFT tool also on the web page. Again, you can go there by using this QR code. And then I, ha I paste these data into the input data field. Control V. So I read the positive input data. I see I've, I've got 10,024. Um, the number of bits I'm reducing now to 8, since this is the number of bits. I will see down here 10 signal to noise ratios and now I can read my positive integer data and generate my charts. Let's look at it. Again, yes, this is the same picture as with my read oscilloscope data. So it looks nice. Um, this curve will then be uh, used in the FFT. I don't need any windowing. So it shows my nice peak here of my signal. I see also this is 10, this is 100. So 10, 20, 30, yes, it should be at 43, which makes uh, is nice. And then I see from the sign the INL and DNL values. Yes, I'm using the range up to from 0 to 256. Unfortunately, I see here that I'm at minus 2, plus 2 at the INL, DNL. So my um, I lose some bits here. Normally it should stay between plus 0.4 and minus 0.4. So I'm losing probably two bits. So let, let's look at the detailed analysis, which is down here. So it shows you all codes are used. So from 0 to 255, all are used. The minimum and maximum DNL is R2.25 and minus 2.25 in the DNL. The INL is minus 0.75 up to 1.5. So I will do something. So I should see this result also in the signal to noise. So I have the uh, at frequency 43. Yes, we did 43 periods. A signal magnitude of 84, d 84 dBs. And then my total noise is 37.21 dBs. So I can take the difference here, which is 47 dBs. 47 dBs divided by 6 gives a little less than 8 bits as an effective number of bits. So we see that we are not quite reaching the 8, eight bits. We see the first harmonics at 30 dBs. It's still below the total noise level of 30. No. It's, yeah, it's well below the noise level of the 37 dBs. So um, the effective number of bit is limited by the total noise and not by the harmonics. So this DAC looks quite good. Um, the INL DNL shows uh, worse numbers than the frequency spectrum. Um, 
So this is the analysis of the FFT. Thank you for your attention. Um, in the next video we will look at the settling times of a DAC.